everybody. So today we are going to build a toy called a buzzsaw. It's one of my favorite things to teach. Really quick, really easy. You can do it if you have wood at home. You can make it out of wood. You can make it out of paper, cardboard. Uh, I wonder what else you can make it out of. So um, I'm going to show three ways to build a buzzsaw today. And you're going to need um, if you're using wood, you're going to need a saw and a drill. Um, I just have my bit brace here, which is like a hand drill, and I have a coping saw, and you'll see these up close in a little bit. And then um, if you're using paper, you'll need scissors and something to poke through the paper with. Um, and then if for any medium, uh, if you're using paper or cardboard or whatever, you're going to need string or thread. Um, a thick thread will be best, but you can use thin thread too. Um, and then, what else, what else? I have some clamps out here, I have my drill bits, and you're going to need a uh, handle material. So, for me, I have, get a little bit closer and show you. I have some sticks that I cut up, sort of a straight piece of pine. And then, oh, you can see Sable. Sable! She's coming to say hi. Hi, Sable. Didn't quite get her there, but that's okay. Um, and then I have some dowels that I cut up. They don't have to be perfectly even. See, they're slightly different lengths. And I even wanted to try using some square stock. So this is just like half inch by three quarters or something like that. Um, so you'll need handle material. If you don't have wood or you can't find um, sticks, then you can also use straws, you can use pencils, you can use anything um, that you can kind of, you probably want to cut it a little shorter, but you can try using a whole pencil um, or snap it so that it would be shorter, being really careful. Um, but you just need something that you can wrap the string around and then hold in your hand comfortably because you're going to be using the toy like this, pulling on the two handles. And you'll see how that works in a minute. So here we go. All right, friends. So before you get started building your buzzsaw, I wanna give you a couple tips after my day of trying lots of different kinds of materials for the buzzsaw. I learned a lot. So I have four different buzzsaws here. I have, oh, this one got a little tangled because I was buzzing too hard. So if you ever need to untangle, you can kind of slide your finger down the center of the rope. Okay, so I have one that's made out of wood and you can see that I drilled these holes in the sides. <clears throat> and I took my, um, these pine branches that I had found outside and I just stripped the bark off of them and then I drilled two holes in these handles so that the string could go through. And I used yarn for this one, um, kind of a stringy, like a strong string type of yarn. Um, but this one works really well. Here, I'll show you. Wind, 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 wind. Be really careful not to hit yourself in the fingers. And I think this one is extra loud because of those kind of like ninja star looking things. Um, those holes that I drilled on the outside edges. So that's one. You wanna be really careful that you don't catch your hair or strings from a hoodie or uh, hit somebody with this because it can get going pretty fast. Um, but just a tip, so when I did this, I didn't take a video of it, so I'll just tell you here. I had a bigger circle, I drilled a bunch of holes, and then I sawed down to my hole with my coping saw, and then I sawed halfway across every hole. So it started bigger. Okay, and then we have a bunch of experiments here, most of which don't work so well, but I think I know how I can make them work better. So I have a paper one that I drew a design on. You can paint your wood one too. Um, this is, eight sheets of thick paper that are glued together. And then this is embroidery thread 
and I have my handles are square, they're square stock. Um, and I just cut these little notches into the handle and then the embroidery thread goes in that. I like to put the knot on the handle so it doesn't get in the way. And then you can see me try this one. It doesn't work too great. So you want to spin, spin, spin until your handles get closer. See this one undoes, it spins one direction but doesn't go back the other way, even when I try to pump. But it does look cool when it's spinning because of the design. Okay, so that's one. So I think to fix this one, I would need to do just a little bit thicker of uh, the string. The string just needs to be a little bit thicker. But if you go too thick, here's an example of too thick. This is paracord that I use. And then these handles just have one hole drilled through, which is totally fine too. Um, if you go too thick, here's what happens. And this is a very thin piece of wood. So uh, it's really light. So if this was heavier, maybe it would work with the thicker core, but even still, I don't think so. I tried some heavier ones with the paracord. So I can see it's not really twisting up very tight. My handles aren't getting closer together. And then it doesn't, it's just too thick. Um, it doesn't really spin. And then the last thing I tried was these handles are just tied around which you can do too, as long as you tie it nice and tight, you might need a parent to help. Um, and then this is just thick thread. Uh, it's like a sewing thread that I sew my canvas work pants with. Um, and this is cardboard. And it's just two pieces glued together, two holes poked with the tip of scissors. And then let's see how this one works. I remember that this one spins one direction, but it doesn't really, again, it doesn't pump. You can't move your hands back and forth. And the thinner your thread, the longer it's gonna to take to wind it up, right? So this one spins, but it just doesn't pump very well. So I wonder what you can make. Uh, you can use any combination of these materials, but the one thing that I do recommend, the one big takeaway is you need something like yarn thickness. Um, so like your average yarn which would be about, you know, that thick. Um, or I, when I've taught this in woodshop, I use a cotton string that is about this same thickness. I'd say it's like an eighth of an inch for parents or older kids that know, know those dimensions. Um, so yeah, the, the thickness and the texture of the string that you use really matters. Like I tried to use a bumpy string that was tarred twine and it was really bumpy and it just got stuck. It didn't really wanna slide back and forth. So um, try different strings if it's not working. Then I wonder how else you can modify. Can you make really nice handles? Can you make yours make a really loud noise? Can you paint yours? Can you um, make, maybe make your strings really long, right? And have fun playing with the whirly gigs. Be careful. Um, Whirly Gig is another name for them. I think I mentioned that earlier. Be careful and um, let me know how it goes. Post pictures. We'd love to see. So I have, I'm going to move my thread out of the way. We don't quite need that yet. So I have my three materials that I'm going to try. Wood. This was just a piece of wood we had laying around. I thought it was cool because it had some paint on it. Uh, I have paper, I'm using pretty thick um, paper, just got some tests from when I did some kind of calligraphy project. Um, but if you don't have thicker paper, uh, you can also use like a cereal box, that would work pretty well. Um, and I'm doing two layers of cereal box thickness paper. Um, so yeah, if you don't have thick paper, you just need to layer more. Uh, sheets on top of each other to make it thick. Um, and then I'm just going to use my water bottle to trace the shape of a circle and I'm going to go close to the edge as my woodworkers know. We usually 
want to go as close to the edge as we can so we have less work to cut up to our line. Um, maybe for my cardboard one, I'm gonna try a smaller size circle. And I just have this Super 77 adhesive spray. You could use a glue, um, but I'm gonna use that to glue my two sheets of paper together. And then I'm gonna go on my wood. Cool. So now I'm just gonna cut these out. My paper, I'm just gonna do with scissors. I'm gonna try to be pretty precise. You can do a rough cut and then like outside of the line and then come back and go right up to your line. Um, but I just tried to get it all in one go there. Okay. And then I'm just gonna spray these. Actually, maybe I'll do it. Let's. And stick them together. And this stuff dries pretty fast, so it's pretty much stuck. And then I'm just gonna use scissors to cut my cardboard one as well. Sometimes it helps when you're cutting cardboard to bend back whatever you've already cut so that your scissors have more kind of room to get in there. You could use a utility knife for this also. And then, oh, come on. My scissors are getting sticky because I just sprayed the Super 77 everywhere. Okay, but I got it. Just gonna trim that up. Nothing fancy. I could even try um, doing multiple pieces of cardboard. So like making it many layers to kind of imitate what wood would be like. If it has a little more weight, it's gonna work a little better. Um, cool. So next step, is for me to, I'm gonna put my paper and cardboard ones aside, put my glue aside, take a sip of my water, and I'm gonna glue, I'm gonna clamp down my circle onto my, this is called an ax block that I have built. It's like a little rustic ax block that I built out of cedar that we cut down nearby and my students know using two clamps is the way to go because one allows your work to still pivot so I am going to use my coping saw to cut this out so for this you would probably need a coping saw um, you could also, if you have a straight, like a back saw or a panel saw that doesn't have a small enough blade to cut curves, you could also cut kind of like an octagon or a decagon um, that has faceted sides and then sand or file down the edges so that it uh, was a circle. So here we go. Okay, so I have all three of my circles cut. I'm picking a drill bit. Um, to use that is a little bit larger than the size of string that I know I'm going to use for my wood one. And then I'm just locking my bit right into my bit brace. Cool. You can use an electric drill um, and I'm going to try to aim for center. Okay, I think that probably made it. Come on up. Oh, it's kind of sticking this one. There we go. Okay. 
And I'm actually just gonna make sure that my twine will fit through that. Yeah, looks like it'll fit. Okay. And then I'm gonna drill another hole. So the first hole shouldn't be on center, like I just said, but it should be um, slightly off center. The idea that they would both fit into a ring, if you imagine like a little ring in the center. You could even draw like a circle. Yep. And that's how you know you didn't tighten your bit brace tight enough. So I'm gonna get it nice and tight on there. Inside. Pulling it up and out. Just looking to make sure it's spinning. Okay. So I'll have that part done. And then for my cardboard, I'm just gonna poke two holes with the tip of my scissors. it over make sure that they went all the way through and do the same thing actually for my paper I'm first gonna draw maybe a pattern it could be whatever you want the more colorful the better so some people call these whirly gigs and you will often see like colorful swirly patterns on whirly gigs. And you probably will make even more amazing patterns than I am. Just going quickly right now. Okay. Cool. And I could even. Lovey's getting carried away. Even draw a circle around them. All right, and now I'm gonna poke my holes and you can do the other side too. I'm just gonna color one side for the sake of this video. All right, so we have two holes. I'm gonna put all my utensils, writing utensils back in my pocket. And um, the other thing that you can do is you can drill or poke or cut bigger holes around the edges, especially if you have one that's a heavier object, like if you're using wood. So I'm just gonna do that for my wood one. And I'll be right back. It turned out that the wood that I'm using is actually pretty dry, so it wasn't really taking um, very well to me cutting holes in it. I wanted to split. Let's just hope that it hasn't split all the way now. But this would kind of be, I would obviously need to clear all the sawdust out of there, but this would kind of be the spacing on your holes. And they'll just allow um, the saw to buzz uh, a little more, like make more of a noise and whoosh more air through it. So, the other thing that you can do is drill holes through your handles. Um, if you are using round stock, anything that's circular, cylindrical, for your handle, make sure to clamp it down. Just gonna drill a little hole in there. And you want it to be like about in the center. I didn't do any measuring or anything fancy like that. going to retighten that so it doesn't slip out on me again. And I'm going to do my other handle. And then you could also cut notches, which I'm going to show on a square stock. I've never tried it before, but I just thought that would be a cool way to attach your string to your handles. Probably good. Doesn't have to go super deep. 
gently set my bit brace friend down. Yeah, that went all the way through. Here is the buzz saw. Wind, 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 wind. Don't get your hair stuck in there. And don't hit other people. But have fun. Buzzing away. Also known as a whirly gig.